Hello, my name is Craig Hanna. I'm a product manager with Metso. And today we're going to talk about the selection, installation, configuration, and calibration of a Metso Smart Pulp Blade Consistency Transmitter. The Smart Pulp Blade is selected for a particular application in which the selecting factors are based on consistency and pulp type. For example, if you have a hydropulper application, which would be unscreened recycled fiber, you would use the WS blade that's shown here on the bottom. It's long, thin, and cylindrical, which reduces debris hang-up. Or perhaps you have a short fiber application, like a screened recycled fiber, or a hardwood fiber, you would use an RL blade. If it's a longer fiber, like a softwood, you would use an LL blade. And of course, you can see there are many other blades for many different types of fiber and different types of installation. Now years of research have gone into the development of these blades to assure sensitive and repeatable measurement within the defined flow range capabilities. Additionally, the Smart Pulp has default calibration curves which are internally programmed. These will be automatically selected based on your blade and pulp type selected. No weights are required to calibrate your Smart Pulp consistency transmitter. The Smart Pulp requires laminar or plug flow, which requires a certain amount of straight pipe. To determine straight pipe requirements, you can use Metso's CS Advisor software. And here, we're going to go ahead and begin completing the CS Advisor software to determine the straight pipe requirements. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the mill name. We're going to say it's mill A. Our application is software feed tank. And of course, you can put a tag number in there if, if you like. In this case, we're not going to. Default is in millimeters and liters per minute, so we're going to go ahead and change that as we go. In our scenario, we're going to use a 6-inch pipe. The fiber is going to be softwood unbleached, which has already been selected, and the uh, LL blade is selected already. It matches it with a fiber type. For example, if we went in and selected an RL, it would give us a warning. But in this case, we go ahead and select LL because that matches with the softwood. And then we're going to go ahead and change the units here. And we're going to have our flow is going to be 400 to 600 GPM. Calculates our velocity. And then we're going to go over here, our 4 to 20 milliamp is going to be from range from 2 to 5. But our set point is 3% consistency. And we're going to be controlling right around 3%. And these numbers here, the, the consistency around set point is what determines the straight pipe requirements. So we want to get this as close as possible. So if we put these numbers in, we look over here to the, uh, the capabilities that are in the blue. This is the capabilities of the Smart Pulp. The pink is our actual application, and it's well within the blue area, well within the capabilities of this Smart Pulp, this LL blade, and for softwood unbleached in regard to the flows given and consistency given. So we're going to go to the next step. And in our scenario, we're going to have a vertical up installation. We're going to select that. Go to the next screen. It automatically calculates our L1, our straight pipe requirements before the smart pulp, and our straight pipe L2, straight pipe requirements after the smart pulp. Here's a summary sheet. And if you want to print these summary sheets, all four sheets, you just simply go up to File, Print All, and you select a PDF program. I'm going to save mine in desktop. I'm going to go ahead and leave the default file name there and just simply create. And there you go. Now what happens if we do not have enough straight pipe requirements? Metso offers a flow TR turbulence reducing vane. Metso's flow TR vanes can be installed in an existing pipe or we can supply the spool sections here. Typically, these veins are about 36 inches long, and if you don't have enough straight pipe requirements with just the pipe, these veins allow you to get laminar flow without the required straight pipe. Now, additionally, 
we want to make sure that we install the no sampler close to the transmitter and in the right position. Now in our case we have a uh, vertical up installation where you can either install the sampler 45 degrees from the axis of the pump here and 45 degrees from the uh, smart pulp or if you have a pneumatic sampler this one's a manual and if you have a pneumatic sampler you can install it 45 degrees and you can actually install it 400 millimeters or 16 inches above or downstream of the smart pulp. Now of course if you had a horizontal installation say you had a horizontal side mount of your smart pulp you can install the sample valve about 16 to 24 inches downstream at the 3 o'clock position in relation to the smart pulp. Before we get into our hands-on demonstration with our smart pulp we're just going to look at the main menu here for a minute or two. The main menu has four submenus: the measure, configuration, the calibration, and diagnostic. The measurement is simply observation. You can't really change these numbers. They're just up for observation purposes. When you walk up to a consistency transmitter or smart pulp, this is typically what you see in this location where it shows percent consistency. If you want to arrow down here on the uh, keypad, you can get the output in milliamps. You can see percent of span, you can see shear force in grams, you can view uh, temperatures also. Now when we're calibrating configuration and calibration of a smart pulp, we're going to focus on these two menus. When we go into configuration, what's the lower range? In our case, the lower range is 2% consistency, that's going to match the 4 milliamps. Then we go down to the upper range here, which is going to be 5% consistency in our scenario, and it's going to match 20 milliamps. Then we can skip down to uh, our units. In our case, we're just going to keep it at grams and temperature is going to be F for Fahrenheit. Mounting is important. Mounting here uh, helps compensate for the weight of the blade. In our scenario, we have a vertical up installation. You also have options for horizontal side mount and also horizontal top mount. But again, in our scenario, we're in the, horizontal, or the vertical up mount. The blade type is very important. In our case, we're going to select LL blade. And that's really all you have to do for configuration. Next, we're going to jump into calibration. And here we're going to focus just in the new recipe section. So we're going to go ahead and now look at a hands-on configuration calibration of the smart pulp. Typically, when you approach the display in the mill, it's going to be measuring consistency, which is under the measurement menu. And as we talked about, what we're going to do is go to the configuration menu to set the uh, transmitter up. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to hit enter again, a lower range. And we want to set that lower range at 2.00. So we just hit the arrow down button. And hit enter to accept it. And then we're going to go to arrow down to the upper range. And we want that at 5.00, so we're going to bring that up and hit enter and accept that. We can arrow down, dampening, the default is 2 seconds. We can enter to accept it. Language English, units, uh, grams and Fahrenheit, we're going to accept that. Mounting, very important. If we hit enter, it's vertical up. There are other options, for example, horizontal side, horizontal top, depending on the mounting of the smart pulp in the pipe. In our case, we're in vertical up, so we accept that. Then we go down to our blade type. That's the next uh, selection. Hit enter. It's LL Hast alloy. It's going to be a little bit different weight than LL stainless steel, so we're going to search for that. It's LL titanium, LL stainless steel, AISI accept that. So that's really all we have to do under configuration. And next we're going to go to calibration. We hit enter to go into the calibration under the new recipe submenu. Hit enter. Recipe 1. The unit has capability of having eight different calibrations or eight different recipes. Obviously we're just going to have one calibration in this example. So we hit enter. It's softwood unbleached already, but as you see, you can select through the, uh, the menu. 
We're going to accept softwood unbleached per our example. Hit enter. Ash, we're not going to put anything for ash. P1 is the slope of the curve. P2 is simply the offset, the difference between the lab and the smart pole. Right now it's set at zero. We're using our default curve based on the LL blade and the softwood unbleached pulp type. So let's say we're going to take a calibration. We're back at the measure menu. It now is reading 2.74. We're going to take a sample. And as we take a sample, we write the, the, the reading down at 2.74. And we go to the lab. Now when we get our results from the lab, we're going to go back into the calibration menu. Hit new recipe, 1. Soft one unbleached, ash, P1, P2. Now the lab came back and said the consistency was 3.00%. That is a reading of 0.26 higher than the lab. So what we're going to do is reduce the, uh, or increase the smart pulp uh, reading by 0.26. We're going to go ahead and arrow up. We're going to make sure it reads 0.26. Hit enter, save OK, and we go back to our measure and we're reading 3.00%. After we make the initial calibration, we'd want to collect three to five additional follow-up samples and make another adjustment to P2 or offset if necessary. In our case, we're going to take five additional samples with the following results. We are basically checking our initial calibration and allowing statistics to work for us with the follow-up samples. So here, as we see, the smart pulp was initially reading 2.74. Our lab came back and said it was reading the uh, it was actual consistency was 3.00. The difference was 0.26. We put that into our offset. It brought the smart pulp reading up. Now as we took follow-up samples, we see the average offset of the five follow-up samples with 0.05. So we simply add the 0.05 to our initial P2 value, and the new P2 value would be 0.31. They're basically additive. And calibrating a smart pulp is really as simple as that. Now there are other capabilities like two-point calibration and multi-point calibration, but for 95% or even greater than that, uh, a single point calibration utilizing Mezzo's calibration curves will work very, very well. Thank you for your continued interest in Mezzo's Smart Pulp and other consistency measurement products.